Oh, hey, Ellie. I'm doing the podcast with Uncle Trav. Ellie, your head's going to get stuck in the railing. If <laughs> See? It's stuck. Mom, you want to help her? She got stuck in there? I'm telling you, she is panicking right now. Do you know the railing, like, rugs? Yeah. Her head was just stuck. She's like, uh, she starts to panic. My guy kind of popped her head out. He's like, Mama! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to New Heights, baby, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by the real stars of this show. <laughs> I'm talking about our friends over at Accelerator Active Energy. Man, I don't know what I'd do without you, baby. I'm drinking on that strawberry. Ooh, that strawberry. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Hey, yo. New episodes come to you every single Wednesday during the NFL season. They do. Um, subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one mm. S. <laughs> Jason, what do we have coming up? Well, Trav, we got a really good episode. I know that's shocking. <laughs> this is a, This is crazy. We're going to get on to the first week. Football is finally back. Week one is in the books. It was an electrical day. We're going to get after all the games that took place. Just kidding. Probably just our games. Maybe yeah, it's probably just ones. our games. But yeah, there maybe wasn't really a lot we should going talk on. about other games, too, a little bit, right? You want to talk about some other games? Talk about some other games. All right. What other games do you remember watching? Well, I, I couldn't watch them because I was out there on Sunday. But What the fuck was that? Did you just take a fucking kick in my knee? No, you played Thursday. You played Thursday. You, you, you were Thursday. I'm not else. taking guy any fucking, shot. He's a fucking warrior over here. He plays I'm in not, every fucking you game. Were playing, you guys and played you Thursday. When you play Thursday, you get to watch the game Sunday. You're so ridiculous. Did you watch the game Sunday or no? Of course I did. Did you watch our game? Yeah, that shit was fucking whack. Who got the ball first? Who got the ball first? <laughs> <laughs> I was in the car on the way over to a friend's house. I missed the first quarter. <laughs> um, I'm going to say you guys did. We did get the ball first. <laughs> Knew it. You guys scored first. We're going to get to uh, this uh, last episode with uh, Kylie, which apparently everybody <laughs> thoroughly it enjoyed. Was it was fun. Yeah. Fan favorite. Who would have thought? Kylie would have been a fan favorite. She's a superstar. Yeah, she's the best. Can't go wrong with Kylie. She is the wind beneath my sails. <laughs> you ro- you're so romantic. Would you read that on a Hallmark card? Shout out to Hallmark, Kansas City based. Swindling motherfuckers invented a whole holiday. Are based in Kansas City. Oh yeah, Kansas City's got some good ones, man. Kylie might be on the show more often, or at least that's yeah, what everybody's no, hoping for. At least once, uh, once a month, we need Kylie on. Once a month. Month a month. I don't think she'll agree to it. Yeah, she won't. No, there's no chance we can get it once a month. Maybe like a holiday episode would get her in there. Ooh, she's a big holiday person, so she'll probably be out on that too. We'll find the time <laughs> to get her back on, but you know, uh, <laughs> but first, well as always, new news. New news. Hey, you start out there, Trav. We got my Kelsey car jam coming up. That's right. Kelsey car jam. That's right. This year, instead of the fashion show that my uh, Foundation 87 or running does every single year, we are doing a car show, the Kelsey Car Jam, baby. It's going to be under the uh, 12th Street Bridge down in the West Bottoms for all you Kansas Cityans and everybody that's coming in for the uh, the game that week against the Bears. And where it's taking place Friday, September 22nd, with all proceeds and, benef- and benefits going to uh, 87 and running, and uh, which is my foundation that helps out the inner city here in Kansas City and in Cleveland as well. But uh, for the most part out here in Kansas City, merely trying to get back into the KC community. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of a lot of teammates there. There'll be a lot of Chiefs players um, in attendance, as well as, you know, just uh A bunch of really cool cars, old school to new school. I don't know if I can let out the bag yet, but there's going to be food, fun, and a bunch of really cool cars. So come on down and help raise some funds, baby. How does this raise funds? Is there like tickets sold or is it all like donations? General admission tickets still available. Um, this includes uh, entrance to the event and access to view the cars, the uh, the barbecue food, because obviously we're in Kansas City, baby. You guys got barbecue in Kansas City? We will have DJs and, uh, and, and music. Um and a bunch of photo ops, man. So bring the kids. Bring everybody, baby. Bring the family. Dude, this is a cool idea. Thanks, man. You're just partnering with a bunch of local people. that. Have, how do you get word out about, like, how do you get cars to come? I have an old school. So I, I'm actually kind of, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the uh, the 
car clubs and a lot of the old school uh, companies out here or the old school kind of car clubs and stuff like that. So I've been uh, I've been kind of just getting the word out and trying to get everybody in the community to come out. It's I've been doing a fashion show the past, like, I think, six, seven years, maybe. Yeah. Going on, I think six, seven years now. So I, um, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to switch it up, get something new, get something new for people to get excited about and, um, switch up the vibes. What car do you want to see most at the Kelsey car jam? One of my favorite movies of all time is, uh, Back to the Future. Okay. That's why I have the Marty McFly shoes. A DeLorean? I think we're going to have a DeLorean there on show. So yeah. What? Dude, I'm pumped. Is it going to be a cyber it's truck or a DeLorean? It's going to be a, dude, both. That would be wild if I could get a cyber truck. Dude, if you got a cyber truck, I might fly in for it. Dude, um, that'd be pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. Throw a rock at the windshield and see if it breaks. It'll definitely break. You broke on the stage. No, they fixed that. They fixed that. If you're throwing <laughs> that thing, it's definitely breaking. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a bunch of cool cars, including a uh, time traveling vehicle. So if you guys want to go back to the future. There we go. For more information, visit 87running.org. That's the foundation. You can always go on my social media uh, at Kelly Trav on IG and click on a, any of the links in the bio and I'm sure you'll be able to find your way right to it or go to the organization's Instagram or social media 87 running. Do you want to release uh, what car you're going to be bringing or do you want that to be a surprise at the event? I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you that I'll have my old school up there. Okay. Little, uh, 1970 Chevelle mm -hmm. 408 Stroker. God, I think it's always sounds so mean coming around the corner. And it looks sweet. Are you bringing all your cars? Not all of them. I won't bring all of them. I'll, I'll have some cool ones on display. Only the old school? Yeah, I'll have the old school and I'll probably have one or two of the uh, more modern cars that I got. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's up there. You know what I'm saying? Do you think there'll be people there that do electric conversions of vehicles? Well, my foundation, 87 Running, has actually uh, helped build a ignition lab where the kids that it's benefiting that are benefiting off of this ignition lab um, converted a 70 Chevelle or a 71 Chevelle into a electric car. Well, I have a 1986 Chevy C10. You trying to let these, let the kids get their hands on it. Go I crazy. Mean, on dude, it? it doesn't run. It's always got issues and I suck at knowing how to fix this thing up. I remember being stranded down at the diner. If they're willing to convert this thing and I don't have to worry about spark plugs and oil and gas, cogs and 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 distributor caps and i want an old school i just want a sweet old school well jason you got to worry about this kind of stuff well no you don't not if you get it converted to electric i just want the old school look i just want the metal frame and i want to be yeah. able to close it and i want the tape player and i like the square body chevys <laughs> i don't give a crap what kind of engines in it i don't want to question whether or not i would need to uber home when I get in this thing, I just want the car to be able to run and then not break down after seven minutes of driving it. <laughs> Imagine being back in the day, man. God, those things are freaking. You remember you just pull over you on the side of the road? You had to know about cars. You right? had you, to. Like, you just that, pull like over guys, on the like, side of the road and you'd open up the hood and be like, well, I'm going to fix this with my bare hands right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Got to go back in my the toolbox. There we go. Tighten up some screws. Why do we both just sound country as fuck? That was back when it was just a carburetor, and all you had to do was all you had to do is just unscrew the uh, the carburetor top, and then all of a sudden the car fucking worked fine once you let the steam out of it. Yeah, it's got to let some oxygen get in there. As you can tell, we're very knowledgeable mechanics. Everybody, come on down to Kelsey Car Jam, baby. We'll have some merch down there. It'll be awesome. I know how to change it. Change a tire, yes, Jason. You know how to change a tire? Um, I do know how to change a tire. You got to take the lug bolts off and across. Ooh, put it back on across. Look at that boy. Look at him. Mm. Uh, would you read that in a manual? I think dad told me. I don't think I ever read a manual. Yeah. Dad reads the manuals. So I only read the manual to find out where things are. If I don't know where they're at. That's fair. That's fair. That's what it's there for. All right. Let's move on to some Kelsey premiere. Hey, how was it, brother? Uh, it was actually pretty cool. Um, I was a little bit nervous and uh, I don't know, it feels weird going to a movie about yourself and your family. Uh, in front of a bunch of other people that are watching it. Um, but it was actually really cool. Nice, man. I've always mocked premieres because I think they're stupid, but mine was great. <laughs> <I'll say. laughs> mine was, it was 10 times better than any premiere. No, it was cool. It was, there's was obviously a lot of friends and family and people that were a part of making this film. Um, we're all there. 
So it was cool to have everybody all in one spot. And then at this point, you know, we've all seen the film so much. So, you know, the, the jokes and the things that you've seen seven, eight times are kind of dulled, dulled down a little bit. Yeah. They don't carry the same amount of weight. So it's fun to watch it in a crowd full of people seeing it for the first time. Hear everybody's reaction and feeling that reaction live. So thank you to everybody who showed up, uh, and all the, uh, media people that are helping, uh, publicize it. It ended up being a really fun event. Jason, this, I mean, we had a picture of you on the green carpet, not the red carpet, not to be mistaken with the red carpet. Red carpet would have been a little bit more formal. I was going to have jeans on, but Kylie was uh, running late. And because um, I came straight from football, Kylie was going to bring the jeans. Kylie was late. Jason, why didn't, why didn't Jason bring jeans for Jason? Because I was at football and I needed <laughs> the jeans for after football. And I'm not going to wear jeans all day. That's just not, doesn't sound fun. All right. I'm realizing now I probably can't blame Kylie for this. Anyways, so <laughs> yeah, I wore shorts and uh, she, was, she was too busy putting jeans on the three girls. Yeah. She was too busy getting the entire family situated uh, with the babysitter and then getting herself ready and making sure her parents are with her. I can't just see you pulling up. God, you don't have my jeans. I'm going to look like an idiot on this gosh <laughs> so true so true <laughs> we love you kai gosh this is why we need kylie here we need her to just be right there we can't bring kylie here otherwise everyone will know what a asshole no neanderthal i am but oh kylie's mess texting us right now what's kylie saying i can hear you i didn't forget them <laughs> I'm always pretty. <laughs> I didn't forget them. I purposely left them so you look like an idiot. Be a little modest, guy. Jeez. In that case, Kylie, well played. I said you're getting ready, not pretty. Did I say she was getting pretty? I don't know. We're going to have to cut all this stuff. I mean, we no, are. was awesome. That's some good stuff right there. That was good. A lot of teammates, a lot of friends um, all came, showed up. By the time this episode airs, you guys should have been watched it. It's on Amazon. I can't wait to freaking watch this thing. It's going to be so much fun. They're also, I think, doing something unique where they're going to like show it after our game this Thursday with Minnesota. So like right after the game ends, they're just going to air the documentary. Right there in the stadium? No, on Amazon. So oh, the okay. game's on Amazon. It's the first game on Amazon this year. Nice. And then right after the game, I think it's just going to like. Oh, man. You, I like, thought they were. There. It was going to be like movie night at the link after the after the Thursday night game. That would have been no, crazy. No, I mean, everybody will be. Yeah. It'll be 12 o'clock. Don't be ridiculous. Awesome, man. I'm glad it went well. You got some good freaking uh, showings from your teammates and uh, their Philadelphia friends. Shout out to everybody that made that thing go. Shout out to Amazon Prime, man. And make sure you go and watch it. So in other news, Jason Kelsey is officially the good guy. Jason received the uh, Pro Football Writers of America Good Guy Award. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's top of the line here. Uh, Given to the NFL player for his qualities and professional style in helping pro football writers do their job. So you basically just give people shit to write about. Yeah. Basically, if you answer their questions and you show up and you're responsive and you have uh, charisma uh, and you play in Philadelphia, they just give you this award. I'm here so I don't get fined. Is it a Philadelphia award? It's the Pro Football Writers of America Award. Read that. But it does feel like a lot of Philadelphia Brandon Graham players. is a finalist. That would make sense. So, it was between and you that and that one BG. actually probably, I mean, if anybody's met Brandon Graham, you definitely know he is a good much guy. gooder guy than me. He's a better good guy and a more deserving good guy. He might be the best guy. You can't get better than BG. So uh, a, ra a random after after Brandon Graham though, it kind of gets a little random. Like Josh Jacobs was up for well, the I mean, award. It, it is an award. Karras, that technically, S S Center Jeff for Karras, the Bengals. Is it Karras? Is it Karras or Karras? I don't know. These kind of things should have like parentheses on how to pronounce them. So Ted from Cincinnati, the center. I should know him because I watch him play all the time. Watch him play the Browns. Hey, that boy got crossed. Then Terry McLaurin. But either way, you know, congrats to the good guy, best guy I know, Jason Kelsey. Hey, um, yeah, I got nothing to add to it. I mean, it's <laughs> well, nice of them. Let's hit our last. Just try and just try and answer questions and uh, just be know. available. You know, yeah. it's yeah. the end of the day. You want to win an award? Just be available on game day. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe in the least surprising new news, 
Everyone loved the Kylie Kelsey episode. New Heist once again hit number one on Apple and Spotify and in top five of all podcasts. Can you believe that? I do believe that, yes. Kylie Kelsey took us to top five. Top five, top five. All categories. Well, actually, 92 percenters took us to top five. But because of Kylie, the 92 percenters watched it. So that's um, we finally gave the people what they were they've been asking for, man. So should we give the Kylie goods. should Kylie just be a new host on the show? I feel like she if, only if she wants like, you know, what I mean, she's having a good day and we just happen to be recording. Like, Hey, Kai, you want to come down and just take us to the top five in the charts again? <laughs> Should we just retire? Just I feel like wait, we should just retire. Just wait like, till like, we, start to, we start to like feather down the charge. Like, hey, God, God, you want to go on? God, that's a great idea. That's definitely how we're going to do this. We're definitely going to do it. All right. So. As soon as we start falling, okay, let's get Kai back on. She's our right. ringer. Yeah. <laughs> got her in the back pocket always. She's Choo-choo. always willing to help. Thanks, Kai. What other Kelsey should we have on? The obvious ones, Aunt Judy. I have said no. I was already going to say it. <laughs> People don't know about Aunt Judy. Judy. She oh, has been boy. hidden from this world. And if anybody ever found her, God, dang, you want to talk about a gem. <laughs> she ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. Zero filter. Best Kelsey of all time. The best. <laughs> we got to get Aunt Judy on here to talk about something. I don't even know what it should be. What would we talk with Aunt Judy about? <laughs> First off, Ed Kelsey. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Get, go- get her going on Big Ed Kelsey. Why I mean, we're both versions diapers? of Ed Kelsey. We both have hidden Ed Kelsey features. Yes. <laughs> Some not so hidden. Gosh, that's a great. We definitely got to ask her about Ed Kelsey. Ask her about Ed Kelsey and who she thinks caught the traits. I mean, that's really the last one. What other Kelsey's can we get? I, I mean, Aunt Judy's the only. I mean, Uncle Don, man, uh, college football, oh, yeah. baby. Get some good. Well, I mean, he's not a Kelsey. Some good. He's a Blaylock, but we'll take him. I mean, he's he's an uncle. Talk about the steroid era, man. Do you think he'd open up about that? Man, that'd be good to just chop it up. Big Ten football, baby. Big Ten ball, baby. Hey, Purdue <laughs> Boilermaker. Let's go. We got some Kelseys we can bring on here. I think that's it, though. I mean, all the other ones are dead, right? Like Grandma and Grandpa, they're gone. Yeah, we'd have to start going to distant cousins. That we never met. If we can't find any more Kelsey's, because there, there really aren't that many Kelsey's out there, we'll just bring Kylie back on. <laughs> and we'll go straight back to the top of the charts. Just go back to the the sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to some fan mentions of the week. All right, now. Our mentions were, of course, all about the Kylie Kelsey episode. Got my guy, Honey Bobo, Bo Allen, uh, obviously telling the infamous story of how he carried Jason. Dude. Drunken Jason. Jason fighting him the entire way. How slippery. He's commented, uh, looks like I'm the one that really swept Jason off his feet that night. That is uh, the first night Jason and Kylie met. (laughs) Uh, Jason got too uh, belligerent. You want to talk about getting somebody on the pod. That's somebody we got to get on the pod. Honey Bobo. 1000%. Yeah. One of the greatest human beings ever walked this earth. (sighs) Then we got one from Terry on TikTok. Terry. Hey, Terry. We need a Kylie statue next to Jason in Philly. Wow. Jason already got a statue, huh? I don't have a statue. Well, you do with Terry. If it's up to Terry, you got one. Is Terry? Do I have a statue at Terry's house? I mean, she's definitely got your Kelly Green jersey for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she's <laughs> statues next. <laughs> um, shout out to Terry. I'm with you. Kylie needs a statue. She's the real Philadelphian. Wild E5168. Don't talk to my uterus is the greatest phrase ever uttered in a football podcast. That was also given to us by Kylie. She really doesn't like it when I talk to her sexual organs. Which you which only do <laughs> more. Exactly. Which you only do more knowing that she doesn't love that. And lastly, we got a couple comments on the New Heights Instagram from uh, some jabroni named Papa Kels or Kelsey, depending (laughs) on who you're asking, uh, who wanted to clear up some things. He wanted to clear up both me and Jason getting kicked out of preschool, which is classic Ed Kelsey. All right. Let's hear his side of it. We've already shared our recollections of it. What's Papa Kelsey? Let's set the record straight regarding Jason's spork incident. Jason and the other boy had been fussing and fighting with each other for weeks. While I wasn't the least bit happy with Jason's behavior, sure you were, Dad, I wanted to know who the village idiot was that decided to sit them together and give them eating utensils. This is this is exactly how I remember this going down. <laughs> this is a, just no, just taking... This is verbatim. 
Just all, just pointing all blame. I stabbed just a kid with a spork, and Dad says, "Who's the idiot that gave the kid the spork?" <laughs> you don't give my kid sporks, okay? You give them sporks. Spoons. Don't spork people. People spork people. What are you doing giving the spork to the person? Um, and then went to go comment on me getting um, kicked out of preschool. I got no excuse for Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I got no excuse for I got no excuse for Travis, but while I don't condone his actions, come on. What politically correct ninwit thinks it's appropriate to tell a toddler you have to lose to be fair? Thank you, Dad. And those <laughs> are the values that I grew up standing by this and is... throwing by. So I just love that. He couldn't come up with an excuse for you. He's like, well, who gave him a chair? Well, there should be chairs. There's going to be chairs everywhere. Okay, we can't come up with that excuse. This is a miracle. So he goes right to the political correctness, shaming. Can't penalize a kid for winning. All right, I can't blame the, I can't blame the chair for being there. You uplift winners, <laughs> not fairness. You don't uplift fairness in America. <laughs> Thank you, Papa Kills, for clarifying all those. Th- the best. The best. Absolutely. Thank you to the 92 percenters for the awesome feedback with the Kylie episode. Please keep all the comments and questions coming in. Uh, please keep them coming in. Before we talk about week one, let's do one not dumb question. Because there's no such thing as dumb questions. Just dumb motherfucking people. Oh, wow. Some dumbass people out here. No dumb questions is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Woo! Let's go sports bar. Let's nice. go sports bar. Let's go sports bar. Do you think if you just said anything in that intonation going down the street, are you getting claps? Not everything. Not everything. If that's you're selective true. with it, though, for sure. I think that's a well, good thing. Well, if you go bet. any sports team, do you think just walking down the street in that we city? Need Billy, we need you would only, get one person to, only one person to clear up this. Billy on the streets. We got to really? get Billy on the streets. <laughs> Just start doing freaking random tra- random sports chants. Let's get to the not dumb question. This week's not dumb question is brought to you or is from Dana Scherer. Mm. I'm going to say that yeah. guessingly. Yeah. Using my the best S-C-H substitute teacher is the sh- Scherer. Oh, no, Scherer. Scherer or Scherer. But, I'm going uh, Scherer. Anyways, Scherer. Yeah, there would be two R's in the middle there. And that's Dana, right? Dana. Phonetically, that is Dana. Our defensive end's name is Mike Dana, not Mike Dana, and it's spelled exactly like that. Tell All you right. what, if the 92 percenters want us to say their name right, they'll put pronunciation in, in quotes, you know, yeah. or in parentheses. Listen, All right. What do you think we are? Key and Peel here? We're not, we, I don't know how to pronounce any of these <laughs> I names. I don't even know that reference. From Dana Scherer on Twitter, New Jersey elementary phys ed teacher here. Settle the debate. What is the best elementary PE game or activity? My she favorite says, My is favorite scooters? Is scooters. I don't know what scooters mm-hmm. is. What scooters? Grew up in the nineties. Is that when you have like the little the chairs, the like little things that you sit on with the four wheels? Cartons on wheels. Is that what scooters is? No, no. I'm not sure if they actually have scooters. That might be now. a P- that might be a, That's a new, a new age Jersey PE thing. deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's New Jersey's got the like scooters. When they, that's when they they started scooters, right when they they were just coming out with scooters when we were kids. The Razors. We did the scooters. Oh, Brandon's going to help us out here. Brandon, what's a scooter? What's a scooter? We need a visual. Yep, that's exactly what we thought they were. That's 100% what we thought they were. We didn't need it. Thank you very much, Brandon. Didn't know that's what they called a scooter. All right. So scooters are great. They're a lot of fun. Those are a lot of fun. We used to turn it into like, I feel like there was really only a minimal amount of things you could do with scooters. Yeah. Like, you know what you could like, do? You could tie a jump rope. Up to one of those things yeah. and really yep. pick up some speed. Yeah. And these people would whip you around, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. The other thing you could do was. Oh, yeah. Of course, me being the biggest in class, I was the one that was whipping the kids all the way. Just... I feel like we used to put one person on the scooter on this end of the gym and the other person on the scooter on the other end of the gym. And then the two people behind each of those people would just push the other ones. And then whoever could stay on the scooter won. Mm. Did you guys ever do yeah. that one? I'm not sure, Jason. I got good short term memory, not long term. That's right. We went over this. All right. Well, scooters, I'm going to give scooters uh, not even probably a top five mention. I think scooters is okay. Definitely number one is dodgeball. Dodgeball. <laughs> dodgeball is great. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's the greatest. Become, it's probably not the best if you don't know how to throw and you're not agile. Yeah. Well, if, if you can, if you have an arm like a, rocket launcher and you can catch anything that's throwing 
above your knees and at your body. It's probably going to be your favorite game of all time growing up. <laughs> and you're going to terrorize children <laughs> unless they make stupid rules that you can't hit them in the like face. You can't That's hit them in the, the face. That's the dumbest rule in dodgeball. If, listen, you, you're, it's up to you to protect your head, buddy. If it hits you, you're out. Better kid, you, you better be aware. If you're going to step inside the, the gym floor, if you're inbounds, you better be eyes everywhere. Dodgeball did, did go downhill a little bit when they got rid of the rubber balls. Yeah, no. Once they got rid of the rubber, the, like now it's now it's just way foam. Safer. There's like no pain to it. There's not. There's yeah. no like uh, retroactive <laughs> like negative to being hit other than you're out. <laughs> like when you got hit with those rubber balls. It was like, oh, dude, that's stunk. I don't know if I want to go back in. Yeah, I mean, give you some CTE right there. And just the sound of the rubber balls hitting someone, like when you pegged someone. It was just, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that shit used to be the best. All right, what's the second best one? Kickball. Well, basketball. Knockout. Knockout. Knockout's a classic. I still play I still play knockout. What's the best basketball PE game? 21-33, whatever you want to call it, yeah. Is it 33? 33-21. I would, you would play either... Depending Either on one. how long you wanted the game to last. Yeah. yeah. And then there was like different rules on like if you tip it in, then the guy goes back to zero. And Okay. I that. hear you. All right. Knockout was the best because you could just get a whole line of everybody in the gym there and see who won it, right? It was a little more fair. It was a little more fair of a game. You know I mean? You didn't have to have that much skill. You just had to have, be able to, you know. Yeah. Have a little effort. You could travel. You could, I mean, you didn't have, you, there was no dribbling skills. What? You didn't have to dribble in knockout? What kind of knockout were you playing? Uh, gym class knockout? The fuck? Anyways, yeah. I'll go knockout number two. Yeah, man. Uh, that's, 21, uh, probably number three. Playground. Four square. Four square used to be great. Good. We, I used to, we used to play that at the pool, man, and that shit used to be so much freaking fun. In, in the pool? How do you play four square at the in the pool? pool? Not in the pool, at the pool. Oh, like when at, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. like uh, yeah, that little it? delay area off it? to the side. Yeah. Tetherball? No, I'm not that old. We said kickball, right? Kickball is great. Yeah. I remember playing two-hand touch in the playground at Fairfax. We didn't do... We did tackle a little bit, but... Yeah, we didn't well, Not obviously. during school, because they wouldn't allow us to do that, but... Yeah. We like King of the Castle a lot. That was more playground, but... Yeah, King of the Castle, that was, I mean, you, you, could, you could get some kids. <laughs> really, I don't want to go How tall this. was that? Like... Uh, Ten feet? I mean, it was huge. And people were just getting kicked off of that thing onto a pile of wood chips. You were kicking people off. Of that I mean, I, I fell off of it a couple of times. I fell off a few times. You got the parachute. Is that the one where, like, you're like, uh, you would throw it over and, like, kind of sit on the, uh, everybody would sit on the corners of it. What was the rules of that there, again? I don't, there really wasn't any rule. It was just kind of amusing. I think there was, like, uh, some sort of game with a ball that, uh, I don't know. I got to say, I unquestionably, forget. the worst. Uh, PE game of all time is tetherball. <laughs> tetherball was, I mean, what an awful game. <laughs> Why did anybody ever find that? How did they find that fun? You ever got that thing flying around there? Yeah. Boom. 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 <laughs> Competitive tetherball. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to watch it for a little bit. Is there, are there any PE games we're missing? Dodgeball, kickball. I mean, I guess if you played four, 21, knockout, knockout was always, a, yeah, those are classics. There was always a good one, though. Jackpot, throw the ball up, whoever catches it. These are like recess, though. This isn't gym class. What gym class? We didn't do that in gym? No. What about like Red Rover or... Ooh, what is it? Sharks and Minnows? Sharks and Minnows. You had to, was that the one that you had to stop? Or no, there was somebody in the middle who was just trying to catch people. Red light, green light? Red light, green light. Sharks and Minnows was a great one. Sharks and Minnows you was had to a be, good one. You had, hey, that was probably where you, you learned your flank. You had to know how to fucking flank. Yeah, that's a flanking game if I've ever heard one. Yep, and you know who the king of it was. <laughs> I mean, I would yeah. play all these games right now. <laughs> I, I, you know what game was always you were excited to play, but it never felt right was when they played floor hockey. When they got the hockey sticks out, but like the ball never really moved very well, and people were sloppy with it. I don't remember playing it. We did it during one of the gym classes. It was it didn't it wasn't as I was excited as hell when they got the hockey sticks out. I just remember it didn't pay it out. Well, I appreciate the no dumb question. Dana. Dana or Dana or Sharer or Shearer. Thank you for your no dumb question. Once again, no dumb questions is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm. Let's go sports. If you guys got All some right. uh, gym games or gym, gym class games that we missed out on, please uh, let us know in the comments.
All righty, before we keep going, we need to shout our new sponsor for the show, and that's Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. Prize Picks is the most fun way to win money this football season. That's right. You can find ways to win money on this fucking app. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And now for this portion of the ad read labeled Personal Experiences to be read by talent outside of me and Jason because mm. we are active NFL players and cannot participate. But you know who can? Our intern, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Brandon. Hey, guys. Come on in here and tell the people what they want to hear. How was your first weekend with prize picks? Yeah. Well, who'd you pick? Jason, I showed up to work again, so obviously not great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. We'll see you. Good luck, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really want to take Pat Mahomes at yards, and I think there's a tight end in Philly who's going to be force-fed the football. Dallas Goddard, I'm taking you with receptions. So go ahead. Find those players. Pick more. Or you know what? If you think I don't know what I'm talking about, go the other way. My life won't change. Maybe it's yours will with the prize picks. It actually was a really fun weekend using it. But yeah, by all means, check out prize picks. Guys, come on back. Summing you back. They're not looking up. There it is. There it is. We got them. We got them. We got them. All right. Now, hopefully our intern did right by you guys. If not, don't blame us. <laughs> blame blame that Demi. And if you want to get into daily fantasy this season, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights and use code new heights for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash new heights code new heights for daily fantasy sports made easy. Go Brandon. All righty, today's episode is also sponsored by our friends at BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. Yeah. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash New Heights today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash New Heights. All right, if you know one thing about this show, it's that on occasion there is a giant dog behind me. And you've probably been wondering just what the hell it is I feed that thing, and the answer is the farmer's dog. Ooh, the farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. That it does. It's developed by vets, uh, nutritionally balanced, and made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. That's right. And my wife prefers they eat this over the gophers in the backyard. It's right, the no. best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real healthy food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash new heights to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. All right now. All right, now let's tee up some bold topics to wrap up week one in the NFL. Man, it was I woke up on Sunday and it was electric. Yeah. Uh, there's something about football being back, just knowing you got the entire day to just watch grown men wrestle with a pigskin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just <laughs> damn, that shit was fun. Starting off with both our games, this is how we do bold topics. Uh, Jason tees up questions and uh, topics about my game and. I tee up questions and topics about Jason's game. Hey, we're going to get to it right, right away. Um, Trav lions, 21 chiefs, 20. Yeah. Home opener ends with a little disappointment at arrowhead. Let's start off with the biggest news from this week with the chiefs. Chris Jones and the chiefs have agreed to a contract agreement or extension. I get my friend back in the building, man. Get my dog back, man. Dude, that's got to feel good. Freaking it's baby shack, man. You, you just miss that guy's aura when he's not around. You know what I mean? That had to uplift the building just instantly. Like, obviously, last week doesn't pan out the way the Chiefs are hoping. Mood, as usual, little down, a little bit upset. Didn't take care of business. 
Didn't capitalize on opportunities. Yeah. That's a pick-me-up if I've ever heard one. Chris Jones, one of the best defensive tackles in the game, coming back in the building. He agrees to a one-year agreement per Adam Schefter with the Chiefs. No new years were added to the contract, but he receives multiple incentives to earn considerably more money this season per sources. Uh, can we take credit for this? Do you think you pleading for him to return played a factor? No, I don't think I had absolutely, I had absolutely nothing to do with this shit. Clearly, I didn't because I was hoping he was going to hold out till we played after we played him, but that didn't pan out. Yeah, I mean, all I heard is that we got Chris Jones back for a year, and hopefully they can you know figure something out after this season um, to keep him here. You know, as long as I'm here, <laughs> you know what I mean. Other than that, um, it was a tough I'm sure one. Sure, Spags is jumping for joy right now. That's yeah. got to be a good addition for the defense. Although I will say, if we're going to get to the game, defense played pretty good. Defense played uh, really good. They gave up 14 points against the offense that was one of the best in the NFL last year. We'll get to that. Let's get to first. Do we have an injury update from Travis Kelsey? Things are looking up. I feel gr- feel a lot better than I did last week. Um, felt like an absolute asshole not being able to play in that first game. Why? It just felt like, you know, a non-contact injury. I feel like it was uh, the karma from this show, to be honest, making fun of Kevin Hart and Kylie for being too old and trying to do things that they shouldn't be doing because they're old. I didn't even think about that. I felt the karma from it. I'm not going to lie. So never making fun of anybody, you know. So you think because we made fun of Kevin Hart and Kylie. I was literally running a route and put my foot in the ground and hyperextended my knee. So so we're back to blaming Kylie. Yeah. Nope. It's Kylie's fault. Kylie, it's her fault for not for me not having jeans at my premiere. And Kylie, your fault for Travis not planting properly and messing his knee up. Yeah, for being too old and planting <laughs> improperly. <laughs> Thinking I still got it. Fuck, such an idiot. No, seriously, though, it was. Um, I did feel like an asshole for uh, not being able to be out there week one. I mean, I know you got to be very fortunate to play this game. Um, I take a lot of this to heart, being able to be out there every single week. You know, kind of you're talking about the toughness rating on Madden. Um, I love to put that on my on my shoulders, on my resume that I make myself available every single week. And uh, the last practice going into the first game, I got a little lazy on some of my uh, movement and sure enough, uh, off to myself and couldn't play in the first game. Did you do the wall drills? No, I didn't. I needed I need I should have done the wall drills. I had the, I would have fucking. It would have got your glutes activated. It would have got the entire posterior. Can't forget the wall drills. Not fun dealing with an injury, especially that late in the week, because then you, for 72 hours straight, are just worried about one single thing. Everybody is asking you about it. Everybody's in your ear about it. Everybody's just trying to figure out, you know, what's the best scenario. It's not, not like the organization was banking on me being back, but everybody in the organization is asking me how I'm doing so that, you know what I mean? We can go out there with the right game plan, the right mentality. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just not fun. Just a, not a lot of sleep. Um, and uh, a lot of focus on a knee that wasn't getting better fast enough. So a lot better than last week. And, um, it, uh, doesn't help when your brother is on national television telling everybody that (laughs) what are you talking about you're gonna play (laughs) i didn't i didn't was i talking out loud (laughs) was i talking out loud i didn't know i did that i will say this though everybody that heard you say that both the medical team in Kansas City. <laughs> and, I can only imagine what Rick Brooks and, and all the players was. that heard you tell that story about how you hyperextended your knee. Trying to kick a piece of firewood in half. Man, that's some good shit. Ah, God, you're a Kelsey if I've ever fucking known one. <laughs> I thought it was funny, and you called me a bitch, but it's whatever. No, I did not. We can put the toughness thing to rest. It's the first game you've missed since 2013. How how many – I mean, I don't think that anybody in the world is questioning anything with Travis Kelsey right now. Who was more accurate, me or Jay Glazer, though? Yeah, Jay Glazer came out talking about 45 cc's. How does everybody have so much information on your knees? I don't know, man. We We got somebody leaking information. (laughs) <laughs> you got somebody leaking information. Um, well, you leaked the information say, to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay Glazer's information was oddly very on point, which was interesting because we usually don't have, we usually got a no, 
you know, you don't talk about injuries or leak information about injuries, but he was, uh, he was saying medical terms that I was like, I only heard that from the doctor. How, how did this information get out? <laughs> um, which I'm not really upset about because it was all pretty much true. Um, and, uh, I did run yesterday and it feels, you know, it feels like I might be able to play this week. We'll see how practice goes, man. Well, do, you, do we want to talk about the process of deciding to play or not? Or do you want to get into that or no? Man, that's a, it's a, dep- like, when did a you depressing, know? it's a depressing process. If you don't play, I'll tell you what, so man. You, you hyper extended your knee Tuesday and yeah, Tuesday, you guys played Thursday. Would, yeah. So two days before the game, you immediately, you know, go through everything to make sure that there's nothing, you know, season ending through the MRIs and the, and the x-rays and stuff like that. Um, and you just get diagnosed and then, um, top of that and it immediately started swelling and that's the one thing with the knees or any really any joint that you have if you start swelling muscles are starting to turn off it's like the body's reaction and like kind of like safety mechanism it just starts shuts off muscles and so i'm you're going through you know the process of trying to communicate with the team as much as possible on where your knee is um obviously being optimistic or is that the right word yeah yeah being optimistic about playing uh, on mm-hmm. Thursday, I was given as much information as I possibly could. It comes to a point where, yeah, you want to be out there, but are you going to be the best player you can for the team? And is it the best option for the team for you to be out there? We got a bunch of great tight ends. I think Noah Gray did a great freaking job. I think Blake Bell did a great job. Shout out to Blake and the ends on our at the Bell Dozer. So I knew that we, and on top of that, we had Matt Bushman come up from the practice squad and fill in for the third tight end role. God damn, that um, is a for tight the, end name if I've ever heard one. Matty Bushman. Yeah, Matt Bushman. Mormon, baby. BYU product right there. Shout out to the Cougs. There ain't nothing else that guy's playing. I mean, maybe he could be an offensive tackle, but that's a tight end name. You're right. Everything kind of going forward, it was just couldn't get the swelling down, which like we were mentioning right there, just the uh, that shuts off muscles. And that's where you really start to put yourself in even more of a um, risky position uh, to go out there and maybe hurt it worse or injure yourself worse uh, because the muscles aren't firing things like that they're swelling in there so it's a little bit easier for the knee to move around it's just uh, i think i'm getting into it too much but at the end of the day you go through basically 72 hours of waking up icing it treatment working out trying to get muscles firing to you know just doing that over and over and over again all while trying to communicate to the team who's looking at you like can you go can you not go and it's just it's not a fun not a fun process to be in but obviously you have to you have to be as truthful and as honest as you possibly can and when it came down to me not being able to go um that wasn't an easy conversation to have with coach reed or rick burkholder or my guy david glover in the uh, in the facility trying to do everything he can to get me back out there um it was just, yeah, not a not a fun time, but uh, we're at where we are now, and uh, hopefully that all is behind us, man. I'm, I'm hoping you're back out there this week. Yeah. Like uh, everybody is. When you're on the sideline and the team's out there, what is it like watching the game, uh, especially when it's like things just aren't clicking? Or Well, the biggest thing I feel like I could bring was just um, – just being a high energy, keeping the keeping the mindset, keeping the focus, keeping the good vibes on the sideline. That's really all you could do as a leader when you can't play is try and keep the guys rallied, try and keep the guys focused, um, try and keep the guys fired up, you know, if things start to kind of go astray. But for the most part, we got enough dogs in that in that locker room and on that field to you know, make it all shake. And I think last week was an absolute fluke of a game. There's no way the the talent that we have across the board offensively that we have that many drops ever again. I know the accountability and the the type of character that we have in the building. And I know that those guys are going to make sure that they get that right. Um, And, you know, that being said, I thought, you know, I thought there was a lot that we could take from that game, a lot of a lot, some good. Um, but at the same time, you know, we still do have a young team or at least a team that hasn't quite meshed together uh, in, with live bullets being thrown around. And um, and that was a good learning experience, man. And um, that's the one thing about week one, man. Don't don't get caught up on week one football across the board, whether you go out and you blow a team out or you come out, you know, kind of shaky and just don't get off on the right start. There's going there is plenty of football to be played 
and uh, and plenty of lessons and plenty of uh, teaching that can go along throughout the course of the season. And um, I know Andy Reid's teams have always progressively gotten better throughout the season. I felt it, and uh, and I know we got a, a plan in place to keep that going. So, um, yeah, don't get caught up on week one, man. That ain't uh, that ain't always what uh, what the truth is. Yeah, I mean, and, and watching the game, I mean, you guys are right there the entire time. You had every opportunity to win the game. Um, you know, credit to Detroit. I mean, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I know I called it a fluke. Yeah, we talked about it before the game. Dan Campbell's going to have these dudes fired up. And right from the get go, a freaking fake punt inside their own 20. And that ended up leading to their first points of the day. Like it was, they were doing anything they could to win that game. And you could feel it. They were fired up to get after it. And they came out and, and they got it done. And obviously, there are mistakes that I'm sure you guys are kicking yourselves over, but they're all correctable. It's not like yeah. anything went out there that can't be fixed. Right. And, uh, you know, I think watching the tape, um, that's something that'll be very evident or is yeah. evident. I know I said I know I said it was a fluke of a game, but it was it, it was only a fluke of a game because I don't think the players that we have will let that happen again. That's where I mean by fluke. I got all the respect for the Detroit Lions. I'm not sitting here saying they didn't win the game outright, which they did. You know, uh, they had a better they had a better you know Thursday night than we did. So uh, shout out Dan Campbell and the uh, and the and the Lions over there, man. Got a lot of respect for those guys. When you see Noah Gray. We saw on the sideline how pumped up you are when he had his 25-yard catch there towards, uh, what was at the end of the half? Does that sound right? Third quarter. Dang. Are you more excited now when you see somebody that you like have mentored or been a part of since he got into league making a big play like that? Because it looked like you're pretty dang pumped up. I I just love it when the the good guys, the the guys that you see work for it, the guys that you see, you know, put in the time, put in the effort, put in the focus get to go out there and benefit from all of all of the what they've done and you know to lead up to that point i i I love seeing guys like that go out there and and just shine and that's what noah gray does every single week man um i just saw him today one of the only guys in the building sweating his tail off uh catching jugs and 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 just being an accountable teammate being an accountable uh, player in this building I, I joke about it all the time <laughs> this guy can't do anything wrong man he's is he is like the professional the most professional human being i've ever met and uh, he does so much for this team and this offense uh both being on special teams and on the offense that you know you can't necessarily put a number on that you know the guy just gives everything he can just to be the best teammate he is so and that stands true with Blake Bell and everybody else in the in the tight end room man it's just it's fun seeing those guys go out and ball especially when you know you're in the you're in the same room with them every single week you see how hard guys are working the attention to detail and then just go out there and play free and ball out man no doubt that's what you get fired up for well it was an exciting game man i know it didn't end the way the chiefs wanted it Chiefs Kingdom upset, I'm sure, but I stayed up and watched the whole dang thing because it was a good freaking game. A lot of defense. For two teams that had two of the highest-powered offenses in the NFL last year, you guys in Detroit, especially the way they ended the season, um, I was expecting a lot more offense on both sides, and both defenses showed up and were flying around. You guys, your whole secondary was all over the place. Justin Reed, Nick Bolton, all these guys – all over the field, C.J. Uh, Garner-Johnson. Detroit Lions just signed him, a former teammate. A lot of good defense being played on that game. Now we got to get to the news that everybody wants to know. You said you were keeping the stash until you guys lose. Does that mean the stash is coming off? Or does it not count because you weren't out there? Newsflash, guys, I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I love to lie to you all. <laughs> And uh, I'm keeping the fucking stash. Stash is staying. Oh, not sure gosh. if I'll keep it all year. I might get sick of it and just get rid of it one week. Um, I'm not putting any parameters on this thing, but I know I do want to go out there and feel the power of the stash. So you want to go out there and suit it up with the stash? On the field. I just want to I want to see what El Travador has to give. See what kind of superpowers I get rocking this fucking thing. We'll see if it lasts all year long, but it's definitely staying for week two, baby. I don't know if everybody else is happy to hear that, but I am. Because I'm kind of, it's kind of growing on me. All right, now. All right, <laughs> now. Hey. 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 Moving on to Eagles versus Patriots. You guys uh, went in and ruined Tom Brady Day. Eagles 25, Patriots 20. By the hair on your chinny chin chin. Not your yeah. hair because you got a lot. Maybe mine right there. That's how much you guys won by right there. 
<laughs> First of all, Jason, uh, you just had to ruin Tom Brady Day, didn't you? Can't let Tom Brady have one fucking day. Um, I highly doubt Tom Brady was ruined at all that day. He probably, while the game was going on, he probably wasn't even watching. He was just looking up at those six banners hanging in the <laughs> rafters. <laughs> Touche. He probably didn't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't think he got ruined on that day. Yeah, no. You, uh, what did you? Were you guys out there for the ceremony? Honestly, I I did not pay attention. I I don't. I think that we were out there for part of it or some of it, but you wanted to witness and feel that for yourself when you retire. No, I, I think I was focused on what we were trying to run in the first fifteen plays, and uh, I don't know. I don't. I didn't. I don't really recall, to be honest with you, if I'm being. Well, winning winning close games, man. Uh, any first thoughts on the game? Just uh, quick takeaways? Yeah, I, well, obviously, really sloppy game for us offensively. You know, got out to a good start in the first quarter, but a lot of that was largely thanks to our defense. Came up with huge uh, turnovers for us, gave us good ball position. Bill's been doing it for a long time, and uh, they have good players on that defense, especially the front seven. They do a lot of unique things. They get to a lot of different looks. And it's always – we talked about this a little bit with Julian Edelman when he came on the podcast, but it's always going to be game plan specific. So you can go into it with the plan of what's about to happen, but you got to realize that it's always going to be a little new wrinkle here and there. And uh, he showed some new things. He, we saw a lot of things that we should have been prepared for. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, the players, myself included, didn't execute at the level we need to. We didn't communicate at the level we need to. Again, that's on my plate. I think that we all just, you know, didn't quite uh, – we just didn't get it going, and we and we didn't adjust well in the middle of the game. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of credit uh, to the Patriots' defense. I mean, uh, you know, they did some really, really good things. They did some things that threw us off. You know, now we get to look at the tape, make improvements, and, and, and you know, find a way to make sure that – those things don't stop us the next time. Well, you guys jumped out to an early 16-0 lead. It looked like you guys were about to walk them right out of the rain. Yeah, it was it was quick. Is there is there when they started coming back? I mean, it's a close game. You guys finished with the dub. Is there anything like? Is there a such thing as an ugly win? Oh my gosh! Yeah, for sure. No, no that there was isn't. an ugly win. <laughs> no, there is. You don't think there's it's an beautiful. ugly win? No, the wins in the NFL are all beautiful. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't. I mean, listen. You know, I'm definitely. You can't always hate. get the happy fuck out with of here. the win. But there's exactly. definitely ugly there's wins. nothing ugly about a win. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the game? It was pretty you ugly. Can, there's some ugly losses. All right, I've had some terribly ugly losses. Well, every um, every loss no is such, ugly. Yeah, exactly. Every win's beautiful. Sirianni said in his press conference he's going to reevaluate having players or starters play in the preseason, which he's kind of like it's kind of like been like a tier system. Like over the past couple of years, he's kind of just like slowly taking the the starters out of the preseason, right? Yeah. So we played um, in his first year in Philly when Jalen was uh, first starting. Really, I mean, he started towards the the last few games with with Doug, but. His first year really coming into the year starting, we played in one of those preseason games, I think. Um, And then this past year, none. We started one of the games last year, too, against the Jets because Jalen got hit out of bounds. It was like a personal foul. So I guess this past year, this season is the first year that I guess we haven't played the preseason, I think. Yeah. No, it says it right there if you want to read it in his quote. Oh, how about that? I was just going off of memory. Should have just been reading. Do you guys felt like you guys were shaking off the rest against the Pats a little bit? I don't. I mean, there, were, there was definitely a lot of things that just didn't go as smoothly. Communication. We had substitution errors. There were a lot of sloppy things, but that's that's what Week One brings. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that we were unique to that. I mean, you guys played in the preseason. I would think that you guys would admit that the Chiefs were not up to the standard that you guys hold yourselves to. So, one thousand percent. I get it. I think that preseason games can definitely help you prepare. I think that they can also – I mean, it helps everything to go through a game day, communication, get ready, all that stuff. Um, And I I think that 
I'm sure Nick will look back on that. And I mean, it sounds like he already has. So. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like no, they're playing he, in the preseason He just, he just re- reevaluated it. And the guys are going to be playing at least one drive next year. So I can cover my yeah. ass on that. Eagles defense. Let's let's talk some defense. It was reported that Brandon Graham gave, gave an incredible speech, an absolutely incredible speech to the Eagles defense in the team meeting the night before the game. Did you hear the speech? I did not. No. He, uh, you think this is only for the defense? Oh, so right. I did not well, hear his 14th season as an Eagle. Are either mm-hmm. of you guys big pregame speech August givers? tenured Philadelphia athlete, Brandon Graham. Yeah. Of all major sports. That's pretty, that's pretty damn good. Shout out to BG. Are you a big pregame speech guy? Do you give pregame speeches? I do. I used, I used to do it every game at university of Cincinnati, my senior year, every game I would get up and just motherfuck everybody end up just bleeding onto the field and putting everything out there and just firing everybody up. And then I realized that I was only really doing that for me. <laughs> so I stopped doing it. There's some skit. I don't know if it's a key and peel skit or somebody is doing it where they're doing the pregame speeches and then they go like they're the other people around it and nobody's paying attention. Everybody's like, oh, can we finish this up? And I was like, nothing has been more accurately uh, represented, but I do a pregame speech every single game. And um, I think but it's sometimes- like the breakdown of- it's like the breakdown uh, on the field type thing, or is it in the locker room? Everybody's I, listening to you. I do it in the locker room. I don't do it out on the field, but I, I think that it always, a lot of the times is just like, kind of like reiterating what Nick's saying or like, Sometimes it's like super emotional and like gung ho. Sometimes it's like, Hey, Hey man, let's just be us play for ourselves. Like take care of the ball, you know, play smart football, finish. Like sometimes it's super fiery and sometimes it's more like, Hey, let's just be, you know what I mean? So I think you kind of read the room and, uh, I don't know. That's just kind of how I do it. But, um, and a lot of it is like kind of based on how we've been playing. You know what I mean? Like if you're, feels like we need energy, we need a little bit of juice, you need that, then you kind of go with that one. If it feels like, hey, we're making a little bit too many mistakes. Jason Kelsey's here to feel you. We're, we're, we're not uh, playing smart football. Let's just remind everybody, hey, let's you know, let's be smart out here. Let's do what we, we talk about all week, what we preach every every dang day in practice. Let's take care of the football. That's how I do it. No, I'm with you. I'm more of a halftime guy. Like if things aren't – if we don't have that mentality – by half, yeah. you know what I mean? Let's go ahead and reassure. For sure. Least, let's go make sure everybody gets on the same page type thing. I think pregame speeches aren't that important. I think most people are fired up to start the game. What you're talking about, I really do think, like, on the sideline, halftime, like, getting people energy, getting going. Even, like, I used to hate when people would fake it. Now I'm like, dude. I don't care if somebody's faking it. We just yeah, we got to get some energy. Somebody somebody just got to get up and start yelling, hooting and hollering, or yeah. you know, like, hey, let's go. Hey, come on, hey, we get but it the back. Wrong let's go. Guy come on, faking, the, the wrong guy faking it will fucking piss you off too. That's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm, I'm like lying. If, I still if the guy that's not it. fucking <laughs> walking like he's supposed to be talking, like if that guy is fucking shut the fuck up. Was there any like you you Fletch and and BG have been doing this thing for like what are the 13 years together now really so Fletch is on his 12th year i'm 13 yeah. so 12 years and uh, you guys are obviously the the guys that have been there the longest as well as lane is there like a additional feelings going into this season given how long you, know, you guys have been together like you guys have like a like a little meet right before the season just talk <laughs> about you know oh, no, boys, I mean, we, this has been great you know, the Eagles just did like an unscripted thing on how we've all been together for so long. Um, I think you, there's a lot more attention being applied to it now. Um, because I think it's unique when four guys are on a team for over a decade, decade. So they've definitely been talking about it more. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, we hang out and talk to each other, not because. Uh, you know, I guess we've been together for so long. I think it's more just because we're friends and we've been no and we've known each other that long. You know what I mean? So we always draw on each other. We always ask each other questions. You know, how's you know what's going on here? How's you know how's the defense doing? You know, what what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You know, how'd you feel out there during the game? You know, what all of these things? And we just we've known each other for longer. So obviously, we're talking more. You know, we might have talked about it a little bit before the season about how crazy it is. I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't want to jinx nothing, but you know, we're all up there for um, a lot of the longevity uh, of like games played and all, and then started and all that stuff yeah. uh, in the Eagles um, record. So we're aware of it, but at the end of the t- day, um, you know, it's always just about, 
the team and, you know, about going out there together and enjoying it while we can. Hell yeah, man. Well, you guys won by five, and the defense put up a pick six. My guy Darius Slay found a way to get in the end zone, shook that boy Mac uh, Mac Jones instead of stiff arming him, like we know he's uh, he can get, <laughs> he of didn't, the he didn't Jones. take the charge this time. Mac Jones, yeah. Mac Jones decided to go with the Ole mm-hmm. uh, tackle as uh, this dude Darius Slay just ran right around him. The Eagles held Mac Jones to three of eight passing. And two sacks on the the final two drives of the game, uh, they had zero sacks up to that point. How do you feel that the defense? Uh, I mean, they they played pretty damn good. I mean, uh, I mean, they played great for the position we put them in. I mean, yeah. the whole second quarter we put them like right around the fifty yard line. I mean, we were getting three and out after three and out after three and out and punting. Um, you know, the defense played lights out. As far as I'm concerned, they're the only reason we won the game, as well as Jake Elliott. Solid first performance for Sean Desai and the new uh, defensive system. Obviously, yeah. there's still things that we can all improve on. The you know, defense played really, really well. Uh, the D line was getting after it, especially in the second half and when it mattered most. Obviously, big rookie performance by Jalen Carter to start it off with eight pressures, got a sack in that thing. Uh, you know, Fletcher Cox was flying all around. Um, it was just I mean, overall just outstanding performance. So. A uh, big shout out to the D for uh, keeping us in that game. Shout out and, to uh, giving the us D. a chance to win it right there at the end. Win um, that ugly, get that ugly win on board. I thought you just said ugly wins don't count. They don't. You said they did. I, I think they did. Ninety-two percenters. We have some great news. What's that, Travis? For a limited time, hot barbecue is back at Buffalo Wild Wings. Fuck yeah! For those of you who don't already know, B-Dubs took hot barbecue off the menu in 2019, and fans have been asking to bring it back ever since. Yeah. Well, really, they've been demanding to bring it back. It's been all over the internet. And I understand why. The sauce is a classic. Smoky sweet barbecue with spicy heat. <laughs> it is delicioso. Man, if there's one thing that can make barbecue better, it's by making it hot. And you can get it this season at B-Dubs. But it's only back for a limited time. Limited so time. So go try some hot barbecue at Buffalo Wild Wings or order some hot barbecue wings at buffalowildwings.com Dot while com. you still can. All righty, we need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking during the podcast all the time. I guess show, whatever we call it. And I think uh, you're going to see that it's Accelerator Active Energy Drink. <laughs> if you've been looking... For something with zero sugars, Mm -hmm. they give you sustained energy. You got me hooked. That gets the metabolism going. Metabolism too? This thing is so epic. And gives you the enhanced focus you Mm. need to record a podcast maybe. You got a lot of things in one. Accelerator active energy drink. I got that star berry over here. What you got? Mm, I got berry lemonade, baby. It's a berry. I also got some cherry limeade. It's a berry, berry evening. And some peach paradise. That boy is. I'm accelerating. Trick right now. Mm. Is a, ah, Accelerator Active Energy is available nationwide at Target, Meyer, and Sheets. Message. Player insights on NFL storylines. Uh, biggest news from Week One has just happened. As this is recording, Aaron Rodgers went down with four plays into Monday Night Football. Anybody getting injured, period, sucks. Let alone Week One. You know, four plays into it. God damn it, that sucks. I think we were all looking forward to seeing Aaron Rodgers go. Yeah. And to seeing what he was going to do. You know, right back to square one, back with uh, Wilson, Zechariah. You know, everybody was looking. Obviously, Hard Knocks has put a lot of hype around this team. All the moves that they made in the offseason, in the biggest one being Aaron Rodgers. Finally, the Jets were getting a premier quarterback. For their season, and he's down four plays into it. Could this happen to anybody else but the Jets? Fuck. It's <laughs> just crazy. Yeah, that's wild. How that's do we wild. feel? Can we get Jets Jake on here? Jake, what? how are Jake, we feeling right now? Bud? Come on in. Jake! Jake. All right, get so back how do in we, here. uh, dude, how do we, is that a, is that an Aaron Rodgers shirt? What, yeah, what shirt are you wearing? I'm, I'm wearing an Aaron oh, Rodgers shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh. Taking notes for this podcast. Oh, no. Watching my dreams die in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's not good. It's not good. All right. All right. Beat it. Jake. Jake, get out of here. Leave. All right. Thanks, guys. 
I feel horrible. <laughs> How much can you read into week one? Cowboys blow out Giants 40 to mm. nothing. Mm, mm, statement game. They really, uh, I mean, to start off for your division <laughs> record or a division of performance like that is a tough one. And it was on Sunday Night Football. Not the proudest moment, I'm sure, for the Giants. Shout out to my guy, uh, Mike Kafka, and uh, my guy, Darren Waller. I hate, hated watching that last night for you guys. Uh, the Cowboys also introduced an AI-powered Jerry Jones hologram <laughs> to answer fans' questions at AT&T Stadium. Uh, yeah, that's what they do at Jerry, Jerry World. Yeah, they make them accessible to everyone. Chat GBT run it or something? I have no idea. Not, not really sure how AI works. Don't really care enough either. <laughs> I don't think you really read into that. The Giants have a great, have a very solid team, good defense, a lot of good coaches over there with Dayball. I think they they find a way to you know get things back on track real soon. That AI thing didn't look as cool as I thought it was going. I just saw the video. Yeah, well, Jerry Jones. I feel like Jerry came. Like, I know this is going to turn out great. Yeah, and nobody at that point can say no. So they just yeah, run no, with Jerry. It. You could have showed up and everyone would have, would have thought it was AI, too. <laughs> the 49ers look dominant versus the Steelers, 130-7. to seven. I'm not going to lie. I watched a lot of that game. was hoping my guy G. Kittle, uh, once he got cleared to go, was going to get a lot more targets. I think uh, I think the Steelers bounced back from that as well, kind of getting the rhythm. Um, offense didn't look fantastic, but that, st- that 49ers defense is freaking stellar. Dude, 49ers um, are stacked. Yeah, they're, they're good they're last year. And they got off to a hot and start. And it makes you wonder year. how they're doing it because, like, all of their players are top ten and paid in their respective like uh, positions. Outside so of the quarterback, like, that's how you do it. You know, they they got a quarterback on rookie deal, so you can pay a lot of other people. And the quarterback's playing great. Brock Purdy picked up right where he left off. Listen, we knew they were going to be good coming into the season. They did not disappoint week one. No, they did not. Off to a hot start. Hot. That boy, pretty good. Pretty good. Browns held the Bengals to just three points. Jim Schwartz in his first game back is the defensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns. Stifling defense. I mean, freaking, uh, dude. You, you played him in the preseason, so did we. You were mentioning. Yeah, we saw first hand that joint man. practice. What <laughs> okay. uh, Jim Schwartz's D-line looks like with those studs up there, with Zedaria Smith and uh, Miles Garrett. I mean, dude. And, and it goes, it, it's way deeper than it's that, a, too. They, their interior line is, yeah. They're good all over. Miles Garrett, I mean, I don't even know why you try and let somebody block him one-on-one. Like, what are we doing, guys? Like, you just want to give up a sack? What, what, what's happening here? Yeah, Bengals struggled. Jamar Chase on the loss to the Browns. We just <laughs> lost to some elves. of all time. <laughs> is it just because, is this a reference to, like, the Browns elf? Yeah, the fucking, yeah, the... The logo in the, the middle like, of the field logo? now. Yeah. What is that thing? I don't even, I'm from Cleveland. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. Where, how, how did that become a thing? There's got to be a reason. I mean, it's a great logo, though. I love it. I don't know. Some, we're only the 92 percenters. Somebody from Cleveland help us out. I loved it when I was a kid. I don't quite get it while they're, go, while they're going back to it. It's like the Bengals or like some like great name. Like, what are we talking about here? Bengals are sweet. They got cool, some of the coolest uniforms out there. They're cool uniforms, but like it's not like, oh, we're the Bengals. We're a bunch of cats. Meow. Yeah, but we're the Browns, and we have an elf as our as our. Yeah, I like the Browns because the Browns don't really even have like, and it's just like the color. They just went like, we're the Browns, but we're orange. That's not figure how it out. The, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> That's not how it started. Somebody, please give us a story. 92%ers help us out. Dolphins looked <laughs> impressive as they beat the Chargers uh, 36-34. Talk about a shootout. Yeah, man. Tyreek Hill. Whoa, that guy's pretty good, isn't he? 200 and some yards uh, on the Chargers. Yep. Man, he uh, he always had a pretty good game against the Chargers whenever we played him. Oh, sounds like you have firsthand experience. And for whatever reason, the Chargers really... Just love playing man-to-man coverage whenever they play Tyreek Hill. That seems smart. Yeah, he was just doing what a cheetah does. Runs faster than everybody. <laughs> Should teams and fans panic after week one? I already kind of alluded to hell nah. How much do you know about a team after week one? That's kind of a better question. There's always things to take away from week one. Uh, you know exactly what you watched out there, and – you know, we're going to find out how teams move on after it. I mean, you know, I think I, it's not like week one is a fallacy. Week one is real. 
and teams lost and didn't perform uh, as well as they can. And now it's about, you know, how do you continue to move forward throughout the rest of the season? Like, how do you move forward to week two? And then, then week three, like, you know, this is a nonstop process throughout the season. And, um, you know, I think the way I look at it is, you know, how many things are correctable that went wrong in the week, right? Like if it's correctable things, you know, then I don't know that it's necessarily alarm bell time after week one because uh, you should have time throughout the course of the season to make those corrections. Now, if you got guys just physically getting manhandled and beat, then it's kind of like, oh, you know, we got to we gotta figure some things out. But um, I think for me, that's kind of how I approach it. You know, there's a lot of scheming, a lot of things that are unique about week one. You're seeing things that you haven't seen all year from teams. So I think that there's always a grain of salt uh, early in the season. And really, I mean, even towards the end of the season, there's teams that are going to come out of nowhere and be playing their best ball at the end of the season. There's teams going to start off out, you know, this really, that's why this thing is a marathon. It's always about how can you sustain it? How can you be consistently that great week in, week out? A marathon. Talk that shit. Uh, I'll tell you what, close. man. Growing up watching Don't Be a Menace in the South Side while drinking your juice in your hood, I learned that speeches and South Central. What I say? Don't be a medicine South Side, South Central. Don't be a medicine South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. I said South Side. Is it it's South Central, right? Yes. <laughs> Just start it over. Just start it over. Go. Mm, the marathon. Mm, preach. Mm. <laughs> Growing up watching. Don't be a menace in South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. I learned Great that movie. what you just said right there is a message. Message. <laughs> All right now. Um, Jason, want to move on to the uh, the next bold topic? On to the next bold topic. Bryce Young's first touchdown ball thrown into the stands. That's right. Carolina Panthers tight end Hayden Hurst yep. caught Bryce Young's first NFL touchdown pass. And then he loved his teammates so much afterwards that he threw it as far away from as possible into the hands of a fan, which will never get back to Bryce Young. Yeah. And you will get fined for it. Yeah, it's also yeah, yeah findable offense as it. Travis yeah, found out fence. firsthand. Yep. But I I got the ball back to Chad Henney. So Hayden, you got to do your best, man. You got to do your best. Maybe give away a signed autograph. Maybe invite him onto the New Heights podcast live. Whatever it is, you got to find a way to get that ball back. Well, Hayden Hurst has since tweeted. Yes, I blacked out and threw Bryce Young's first touchdown into the seats, but they threw it back, and the ball is in safe hands. Everyone can relax and dial it back. They threw about it back. Thirty percent, including us. So, so I guess they, they all the realized back. it. They all they realized it back. immediately. That's actually that's good on those fans. That's right away, terrible like, on no, those no, fans. No, no, you don't no, no. Get, you don't get anything in exchange. You know what I mean? You got to hold on to that thing. It's a good point. That's just bad bartering. You could have got season tickets. You could have got fucking Bryce Young's first touchdown ball. <laughs> to get that ball back is like you could have like a, everything's transactional. Super Bowl tickets. Give me some Super Bowl tickets. I'll give you this ball back. What's a fair trade? What's in? a fair trade for your first touchdown pass? Yeah, season tickets. I mean, would you give up season tickets for your first touchdown catch? I don't give a fuck about touchdown catches. I've never had a touchdown, so I'd, I'd probably give up something. The only one I ever cared about is like the Super Bowl one. The Super Bowl one was pretty cool. Gave that to Aunt Judy because she couldn't make it. But other than that. Trav, why is throwing the ball into the stands so hard to resist for tight ends? I just, I just love just, just, just fucking just throw that thing up in the air. How about this? Mike Evans famously gave away Tom Brady's 600th touchdown ball. Yeah. Do you think you Tom Brady that? cares when you get to like he 600? He didn't throw it in the stands either. I think he, he like literally it. handed it to somebody in the stands. It was a kind gesture. It's a lot of money. He just handed out a lot of money. I mean, I feel like it's 600. You probably should stop caring about the ball, right? Tom Brady then gave the fan who returned his 600th touchdown ball a Bitcoin, a few signed jerseys, a helmet, and a Bucks That's season. What I'm, this is what I'm fucking talking about. Dude, a Bitcoin? This fan did it right. What's a Bitcoin right now? That's like, what is that? Like 30 something thousand dollars or something like that? Is it that high? 60,000? See, yeah, it got up. To, it got up to sixty at one point. I don't know where it's at now. It might be damn. It might, might be pretty low. You got to freaking. You got to know what you got in your hand here. <laughs> can't just be giving that thing back for free. Definitely can't just be throwing it back. You know, Bitcoin is twenty five thousand dollars right now. Yeah, that's it's probably damn. way more when they got it too. It's probably like you said. I think at one point it was up by sixty. Yeah, well, season tickets too. I mean, that guy did it right. Yeah, and this, this guy's just throwing the ball back. <laughs> <Just> right, <Young. laughs> throw it back. 
the but he guy got a Bitcoin. Threw, the guy I threw it to at least came on New Heights Live. <laughs> That's right. Shout out to uh, Hayden Hurst for making sure your QB gets the ball back, baby. It's, it's tight end right there, baby. It's all heart. All heart. You know what it's about. And shout out to Hayden for getting in the end zone, baby. Tight end you. <laughs> Geno Smith shouts, oh, my God, as AD runs at him. That uh, that clip is absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen it's it, amazing. go ahead and click on the link. I mean, it's pure comedy. You know, you see 99 <laughs> coming down the pipe untouched. It's uh, terrifying, I would assume. And Geno Smith um, had to talk to God about it. TV Mike's picked up Geno shouting, oh, my God, uh, on the broadcast, actually. So if you watched it live, you could actually hear him say, oh, my God, as 99's breathing down his neck. Have you ever had something like that happen to you? Like where you've been like, have you ever, first of all, you ever said, oh, my God, or anything like that? Like we're just so shocked. You're like, what? Like what? 1,000%. Nothing that jumps out to me on the football field or even off the field, but I've definitely been there. I feel like everybody's been there. I mean, I've definitely felt that, but there's nothing that's ever come out of me audibly, like where you're just like. I've had more of the moments where it's like, like, like uh, in TV shows or like you'll see a, a IG reel and they'll like pause the tape or everybody will freeze and it'd be like, this is where Travis knew he fucked up. Like I'll have like a moment like that in the game. Like when I try and hurdle somebody and I'm like about to fall on my neck and I'm like, ah, it was at this How point. How did I get here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had a bunch of these moments, but nothing audible. I don't think most of the audio going on for me is just, <laughs> it's just grunts. I feel like the only other time I've seen something like this was, uh, one of my favorite clips. If you haven't seen <laughs> it, it's the best of all time. <laughs> uh, Malik Jackson, yeah. my former teammate. Love you, Malik. Uh, getting <laughs> shushushed <laughs> by uh, Lady on Bell. Just getting the shushush behind the line. Uh, boy, Lady uh, he has a very ankles, audible. Man. Oh, oh, like, I don't, like oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> um, that's a highlight. One of the best. <laughs> Fell on his face as Do Lady yourself a on. favor if you haven't seen then that. Broke go watch that clip. To the secondary. Got him to the secondary yep. after he made that cut. Um, yeah, Le'Veon could do that to you. Classic. You guys got to check that out if you haven't seen it. But that wraps it up for Bold Topics. hey Let's just get to our New Heights Stamp of the Week. Week one is officially in the books, so let's shout out a couple guys who took their game to New Heights <laughs> by handing out our stamp of the week. New Heights stamp of the week is brought to you by Accelerator Active Energy Drink. There we go. Which I'm still drinking these at night. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, they taste better as the sun goes down because there's nothing like 150 milligrams of caffeine and a shit ton of plant-based thermogenics hey. when it comes to taking your game to New Heights. God damn it, I love this shit. I'm going to take another sip. How was it? Woo! Pretty good, I guess. Kiwi lime, baby. All the flavors are banging. Jason, who you got? Um, I'm on three. I've had cherry limeade, peach paradise, and I just uh, started to down a little berry lemonade. So, man, you're gonna need some melatonin if you want to go to sleep tonight. Who's your uh, Who's your stamp of the week? A lot of options. I was thinking about going Jake Elliott, my teammate. Uh, I, I can't remember the kicker. last time a kicker did he have four field goals in shitty weather too. Rain, rain game, although in the second half was most of them, and that was the rain had kind of cleared up. But either way. It's moist in the air. It is moist. You know what? I'm going to go with another, well, former coach. I'm going to go with my man Jim Schwartz. Solid start to the season for the Browns, holding high-powered Cincinnati offense, uh, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, um, and a team that has been one of the best in the NFL to just three points opening weekend. Um, Pretty dang good start. As the Browns DC, he's back in business, baby. Jim Schwartz, stamp of the week. Old ball coach. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going a little uh, Calvin Ridley. Finally back playing in the NFL, man. 686 days since he played last. Um, and he went for eight catches for one on one and a touchdown. Um, had a lot of, had a lot of those yards early in the first quarter. Um, on the first drive, uh, taking it to the house. And man, it's just, um, it's one of those, you know, you love to see a guy bounce back, you know, had, had some things go on in, uh, in his career and, and in his life that, you know, to get back out onto the field, he had to go through some things. So to see him yeah. back out there shining and uh, running routes, I know it's going to be a tough cover for anybody, let alone for the Kansas City Chiefs next yeah. week. So shout out to Calvin for taking his game to new heights. Um, just chill out next week. All right, just chill out a little bit for, for your boy. All righty. Quick shout out to Calvin Ridley. New Heights stamp of the week for you, Trav. 
That's it. That does it, boy. Week one is in the books. Die right now. That wraps up this episode of New Heights. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when new episodes come out. And this season, we'll be releasing bonus videos at the end of the week exclusively on our YouTube page. We'll look ahead to both of our games and maybe do some fun questions or other bullshit we can think of. So listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Message! From Jason hey. Kelsey. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by our friends at Accelerator Active Energy Drink. That's right. This Kiwi Lime's going to keep me up all night, baby. Mm. Pulling the all nighter just like that old day, baby. Go ahead, let me get the right there. Out. Yep, yep. All right, now. Damn, that's good. No way it doesn't have any sugars. Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with 1S, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to our production and crew. For always mm. making us look way better than what we are. You guys are the best. And to the 92 percenters for always tuning in. We'll see yeah. you after week two in the NFL. Peace. Peace.